So I'm here in Manhattan for uh, Zero Day. I actually came into the city because I had to take care of some business and I thought, well, I'm here, let's get up some videos, particularly uh, one that a lot of you have been anticipating and that's my mid-hike gear update review video. And um, just a disclaimer before I even get going with this though, that if you are following my adventure but aren't really a hiker, don't have any desire to be a hiker, just want to see the adventure and see America uh, on my hike, um, this is going to start off slow and go downhill from there. So you don't have to watch it. But if you are a hiker or you're thinking about hiking and getting some gear yourself or if you're thinking about a potential through hike, I found when I was preparing for my through hike that these mid hike gear reviews and the post hike gear reviews were the most valuable because everything was field tested. So I think this could be very, 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 very valuable to those of you that are thinking about that. So um, I'm going to begin, but I realized after I put it all together that I had forgotten a couple pieces and one piece was... Um, I have this little uh, thing here, which I keep my um, sunblock and lip balm in. You don't, you do need the sunblock and lip balm, but you don't need it all the time because a lot of the times you're under cloud, uh, you're under tree cover, so you don't need it. Um, I keep my little easel in here for my uh, camera and phone that, that, that I'm using right now. And also in here is a stick pick, which I have very rarely used. Uh, and a little emergency whistle, which I don't know why I keep, but I feel I should have it just in case I fall in a ditch and need to create some noise. So that's that. And then the, the other piece that I didn't mention was my cook set. And there was a reason for that because I was planning on sending my cook set home, which I am. I'm leaving it home. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm only going to do cold food. Most of uh, my friends, a lot of my friends, I should say, have already gone to cold food and sent their cook sets home. Um, it was something I, a phenomenon I noticed in, uh, in previous uh, year videos with people sending their cook sets home kind of midway through and now I know why. It's, uh, at the end of the day you're so tired you don't want to cook anyway and, uh, and what not. But I, I did want to show you that what I kept in my cook set because you, if you're going to start a through hike you're definitely going to use it in the beginning at least. And I always have a, a bandana and this was a gift from friends that I very much appreciate. I had the little Micron Ion stove. This is not the one I had in my last video. I thought that that didn't have enough space between the gas canister and the uh, and the flame. So I got one that's just half an ounce le half an ounce heavier, but has a little more distance. And it's called the Micron Micron Ion uh, lamp. A little lighter and the fuel. And then the same uh, cook pot that I had. And I did everything boil water. I didn't cook in here. I just boiled water and poured it into the Ziploc bag. So that's it for the gear that I forgot. Oh, the one thing that uh, I've never mentioned is my guidebooks. And I don't carry a guidebook because I'm trying to go as light as possible. So I do have it on my phone. I have uh, AWOL's guide on my phone that I, I use quite regularly. But I also have Guthook's app, which is an app. It's not cheap. It's, it's a little on the pricey side, but it's wonderful because it has GPS and it can locate you on the trail at any time. So if you're going up a hill, you hit you know GPS and it'll tell you where you are, how much further you have to go up the hill, where the next water source is, where the next shelter is. I find it immensely invaluable. And you don't even have to be hooked up to Wi-Fi or to uh, a satellite. It's just, I don't know how it does it without being uh, connected, but, but it does. So I, I recommend having both of them. I have them on my phone and have had no, had no problem not having a hard copy of AWOL's guide, uh, but some people really do prefer the, uh, the hard copy. So, all right, let's get into the rest of it. So I'm at Pine Grove Furnace State Park, um, which is just past the halfway point. I stayed at the Iron Masters Hostel last night, which was great, and I uh, thought this was the perfect location to do a... Uh, a halfway gear gear video. So what I'm going to do is kind of go through my gear on the outside of the pack and how I stuff it. Uh, and then what I'll do is cut and go into each of the stuff sacks individually so you can see what I put into those uh, and then also how I pack it separately. So on the outside is anything I don't mind getting wet. And I think it's probably best to just start from the side here. Um, this side pocket down here I use uh, for my toiletries. This is my bathroom, so to speak. And I have one stuff sack that has uh, uh, my toilet paper, um, a trowel. I have the uh, trowel that I showed you in my first video and some hand, sin hand sanitizer in there. I also have my much beloved emergency bag for those evening uh, emergencies. 
where I don't want to get out of my tent, and I don't know why everybody doesn't carry them, but after a rainy night or a cold night, uh, there's a lot of people that are jealous of me. Uh, up here I have my, my water, my kitchen, and this is, um, I always carry a 20 ounce, I guess this is a 20 ounce water, um, smart water bottle with this cap because I can back flush my Sawyer with this cap. I carry uh, a bag, it, it's an Evernew bag, um, the two liter, and I highly recommend you getting Evernew. Um, some people are using their Sawyer bags and almost everybody I know has had to replace their Sawyer bags at least once so far. I have not had to replace this and anybody I've talked to that is using Evernew bags is not having a problem at all. So I highly recommend Evernew and then obviously my Sawyer, uh, the Sawyer Squeeze. And with the, uh, the special attachment that I mentioned in my first gear video that Tom Willard came up with uh, or told me about, it's really just the best uh, gravity flow system. I just put this on here and my water is all filtered by a gravity. So that's that's my water system right there. If we go to the other side, this is where I keep my two one liter smart water bottles. I carry two. Most people just carry one and then the smaller one or, or just one and they, they'll drink a liter at the source and then they'll carry a liter. I drink a lot of water so I do carry two liters and my bag does allow for two in this side pocket. So I do have that. On the, the thing here, I have hand sanitizer, always good to just keep it handy and useful. Uh, and then on the back, we have the, um, on the belt, pa belt pack, I actually have a, uh, a pouch here where I can keep my, my food for the day. So like my protein bars, that sort of stuff, anything I want to grab while I'm hiking um, that I don't want to go into my pack. So that's, that's it for the side pack. It's in the front, I have ShamWow. I, have a, I carry about two or three of these at a time. These are amazing uh, for wiping up condensation in your tent, for anything you need to just wipe up. They're just, they're just so great to have. Um, I've spilled water in my tent a couple times, and these just soak it up right away. So very, very handy to have. Here is my rain gear. I'm going to take it all out and show you individually. So first off, we have um, my rain jacket, which is the, um, this is the Z-Pax uh, lightweight rain jacket. I'm not certain what they call it, but um, I switched it out from my Arcteryx rain jacket that I used in the wintertime um, to the summer jacket. Now, I, I'm not the expert to talk to about rain gear. I hate rain gear. Uh, probably most people do. Because uh, rain gear out here is not like shopping for rain gear. In the real world and what I mean by that is when you're you're looking at rain gear in the real world you're looking to kind of keep you dry for 15 20 minutes till you get to your car or to um, a place where you can dry out out here you're in the rain for hours and hours and hours and so actually wearing this you're gonna find that you are going to if you wear it for a long period of time if it protects you from the rain and not all of them do uh, you're gonna sweat so profusely if it's not cold out that it kind of becomes useless in a way. Essentially what they, what rain gear is essential for is keeping you warm and keeping you to, uh, to avoid hypothermia. That's, that's essentially out here what, uh, what I found rain gear to be useful for at least. I also have the rain, uh, the Z-Pax rain kilt, which I like a lot. Um, you can use this as a ground cloth and other things when you're not using it as a rain kilt. Um, I've gotten to the point now with both of these where Sometimes I don't even put them on. It's warm enough now that um, sometimes I will uh, just go without and just get wet. And it's really nice after a really hot day to be showered on at night. Um, but if you think it's going to be a really cold evening or if you think you're going to get uh, a lot of rain, I will put this stuff on. Um, the last thing I have for rain gear is, um, well, sunglasses the same sunglasses I started with. You don't really need them that much, believe it or not. You do need them, but I don't use them very often. And then just my Z-Pax rain cover here. Um, let's see, I do have some, um, these are the uh, Altras that I just bought and I have not put them on yet because I need to get uh, some uh, super glue to put them on. But um, this is the Altra Gators. 
for around my, my shoes so rocks and pebbles don't get in my shoes. I have to put them on, but in the meantime, they are in my, my little rain pouch bag, which is where I put most of the rain gear. I keep an extra hat. I probably don't need it, but this hat, sometimes, uh, you know, I'll, I'll need to wash it or it's really bad smelling, so I will, I will wear this hat in the meantime. That's, that's kind of a weight penalty I'm willing to take. And then the shoes I had sent to me, I actually bought camp shoes at, at Walmart, 97 cent flip-flops right out of the gate and um, decided that uh, they were working really well and they were actually probably lighter than these, but I decided to have these sent to me anyway. These are the unshoe. Um, and the reason I had them sent to me is because they're more of a sandal and they, they, they hold on your feet, unlike a flip-flop, which you can't ford a river with. I, I tried fording that back a, a month or so ago when uh, Napster and I went to McDonald's and we forded a river coming back. Some of you might re remember that. I was in my flip-flops and trying to keep them on as I'm crossing that river was very difficult. So, so these are really light. They're called the Unshoe and uh, I, I, I like them a lot. They're a little heavier than the flip-flops, actually, but, uh, but they do a good job. So that's that. I uh, did want to talk about my poles. These are the carbon cork black diamonds that, uh, that are um, adjustable. And what I would recommend when it comes to poles is to get the adjustable ones, whether you get whatever kind you get, black diamond or leckies, get the kind that have this kind of lock, not the kind that have a string in the middle that you can pull apart because two friends have had those. One had a lucky lucky pair and one had a black diamond pair. Both of them broke um, within weeks of starting the trail. So, but people that have these kind of locks uh, really haven't had any problems, including me. This is uh, these two, this pair of uh, carbon corks actually I had on the entire Camino, uh, my first one, and they've gotten me over 1,100 miles here. So I really like these, uh, these poles. Um, Titanium spoon. Got this idea from Joe Brewer with the smooth, uh, the smooth um, spoon part. It, it's really it's great just to keep it on the outside. Um, and then this uh, this uh, seat, which um, you know Will Wood talked a lot about, and he used, and I, I agree with him. It's just really handy to have to kind of throw down on a log or a rock, uh, especially when things are wet. So I just always have that that with me. Um, all right, so I'm going to cut and we'll go into the back. All right, so before we move on, there were a few things that were in the front part that I forgot to mention on the last clip. And the first one is uh, Green Mountain Tick Repellent. And a friend gave me this before I came. Um, and uh, I just started using it a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> I And I have not found any ticks when I've been using it on me. And uh, one day the, the gnats got really bad around my head and I sprayed a little bit around. They went away right away. So there's something to it. It's all natural. It's unlike the promethean or the, the toxic stuff that you can put on your gear, which a lot of people are doing, and I just don't feel comfortable doing it. Um, and it doesn't actually, I wrote to Z-Pax, and uh, they wrote to me and said it won't actually stick on Cuban fiber anyway. So to, it's kind of pointless to spray promethean all over your, your tent and, uh, and uh, bag if they, if they happen to be Cuban fiber or Dyneema or one of those materials. So anyway, uh, I'm not certain how well it works. I have found three ticks on me, not when I was using this though. So, um, and since I've been, when I have had it on, uh, I have not found ticks on me. And when I say I found them on me, they were crawling on me. I got them out before they bit. I have not found any embedded in me yet. Um, glide, body glide. At some point, most hikers have some, some form of um, chafing. It's just kind of when you're walking 20 miles a day, it's gonna happen and it tends to happen in the, the more humid, hot weather. So, um, so that's, I've been, I use it when I, when I need it. And then this is a little, um, it's another uh, sack for around my waist, for around my, my hip belt, uh, to put my phone and stuff in when I'm wearing my shorts because I love the pockets in my pants and that's probably why I wear long pants more often than not, that and to keep the ticks away. Um, but, uh, when I don't have those pockets from the long pants, I, I will put this on. All right, so let's go into the, uh, the actual pack. So I still have the, um, I still have the, the, the dry liner inside the pack that I got from Z-Packs. I have my electronics in a, a, a Luco sack bag my toiletries, or my ditty bag as some people call it, my clothes bag, 
my um, pad, my sleeping pad, my food bag, and finally my sleeping bag, which is also in a in a dry bag. And you had I had said on my first uh, video that I probably wasn't going to take the dry bag and just stuff the uh, the sleeping bag down into the uh, to this dry bag, but I just felt. Um, it, it added an extra layer of protection. It didn't weigh much. This bag weighs 1.8 ounces. And uh, in addition to that, it just helps keep the things stuffed a little better. I find it just keeps the form of the bag a little better. So, all right, so let me cut and I'll start going through these bags individually. So before I start going into these, uh, these stuff sack, what's in the stuff sack bags inside my bag, I forgot to mention my duplex tent on the outside. I carry that at the bottom of my, on the outside of my bag. And um, I will say that the duplex, I love the weight. I love the roominess. The condensation is an issue, and it is with any tent, and in particularly any single wall tent. But, uh, you know, the ShamWow works great. It's only certain nights that it's really bad uh, when I tend to be in a gap near a water source. That tends to um, make the condensation bad, and obviously, when it's raining uh, for days on end, the condensation can get kind of bad. But uh, you're going to find that with any tent, and I really do like the, du du the duplex. So um, the ground sheet is the Cuban fiber uh, ground sheet for the duplex. I did spend the 100 bucks to get that because of the weight. It's 3.5 ounces, and um, you can use Tyvek, which a lot of people use out here. Uh, but you're going to pay a weight penalty. Uh, you'll save a little money, but I, my Tyvek, I actually weighed when I, I think I mentioned it in my last video, I weighed in was something like eight ounces. So to save those five ounces, I, um, I did buy the Cuban fiber uh, ground sheet. The other thing I should mention is my, um, my Arc Blast bag. I love it. It is, that's probably my favorite piece of gear is the Arc Blast, uh, Cuban fiber bag. I, um, it has had uh, a little damage. There's, um, there's the start of a couple holes in the back of it uh, against my back, which is, I think, the most common complaint about it. Um, but for 1,100 miles, uh, not bad. Let's go back to this inside. This is my food bag. This is the z packs food bag, bear bag system. Um, yeah, this is the one piece of z packs material uh, gear that I don't, I'm not crazy about. Um, it does keep the critters out. It, uh, they can't bite through Cuban fiber apparently or not as easily. I haven't had any problems with that. The problem I run into is when it's four or five days of food, the weight, this is not enough. When this is clipped, it is not enough to, uh, it's too weighty on the poles or on the uh, string and has sometimes come undone. And so what I would suggest to z packs if anybody is watching, is to um, strengthen these in some way, because this is, this is the fault there. And I've actually had, uh, had to replace this too because it's stretched out so much. So it's only really for through hikers that are carrying four to five days of food. If you're carrying under that, it's, it's a wonderful piece. But when you get heavy, I would say when you're over 10 pounds of food, 12 pounds of food, uh, you're, you're, you're in trouble here when you're hanging it. So um, down here is my, my cozy or koozie, I guess, uh, that I got on Amazon. It's Hamhock Outdoor Gear. Um, it's, it's done the job, no complaints. This little knife has been great. It weighs practically nothing. It has a little scissor on it and a little knife. Rarely use a knife out here, so it's all I've needed. It's great. Um, <clears throat> as far as the air mattress, you know I, was, I had the Thermarest uh, Neo Air X Lite, which I loved. But what happened was, it, just about two weeks ago, it started, the seams started coming undone, uh, the baffles. There's like baffles in the, in the actual bed, and it started coming undone. And I could still sleep on it for a while, but they just got worse and worse and worse. So I called, um, uh, I called the company, and Thermarest said instantly, they were like, send us a picture, sent me a new one right away. They actually didn't have the Neo Air x -Lite in stock anymore. They're out of them. So they sent me a different one, which weighs 1.9 ounces ounces it's a great sleeping pad but just too much so i in the meantime i had to get the sea uh, a lighter one and uh, this was the one the outfitter i in the town i was in had i think it was waynesboro um it's the sea to summit uh it's the blue one it's not their lightest one but it's 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 perfectly fine it's it's fine um it weighs more than the neo air x light by like maybe two or three ounces but it, it folds up like nicer. I like the fact that it folds down a lot better. 
Um, my Exped pillow I absolutely love, and here's a trick that Cupcake told me early on, and I've used it every every night since. I, after you blow this up, you just put a um, a buff over it, and it becomes a pillow pillowcase. Because I was having the problem of this thing smelling so bad after like a week or two of me sleeping on it that I didn't even want to put my head on it. So now I just put a, a buff over it, and uh, it, it serves as a pillowcase. And I wash the buff when I wash my clothes in town. It's great. So the dry bag with my sleeping bag, I had the um, Western Mountaineering Alpine Light 20 degree bag, spectacular. That, that bag, I have absolutely no complaints with that bag. The only thing with that bag that is tough is when it gets a little bit warmer, it does get stuffy inside because it's so good at trapping heat. Um, so when you get into the mid 50s, it can get sweaty. Like my legs were getting sweaty. Um, so I had them my parents send me this. Uh, this is their 40 degree bag, uh, Western Mountaineering. It's actually a quilt. It's not a bag. As I mentioned in my last video, I believe in winter. I prefer a, a sleeping bag with a hood in the winter. Um, and in the summer, though, I want a quilt that I can open up and just throw over me or use as a sleeping bag. And this you can use as both. Uh, it weighs, gosh, it's so light. Um, it's comparable to all the other light, lightweight companies uh, that are doing quilts, and um, so I highly recommend it. I just bought this. This is a silk liner, the Cocoon silk liner for a sleeping bag, and I don't know. I've only tried it, used it one night. Um, I don't know. I, my, go my goal is to s this material that the sleeping bag is made of is kind of hard on the skin. I mean, when it's, when it's damp out, which is what? almost every night out here, um, you, you get a little clammy next to it. So I don't like my skin directly touching the sleeping bag. And that goes for all sleeping bags. It's not just the material on this. I've tried other sleeping bags where I had that. So I do like to wear a lightweight um, like uh, tights and a, and a t-shirt just to kind of keep my skin off of the, the clamminess of the bag. So I was hoping because now that it's warmer, I could just use this instead and send my, my tights and my uh, sleep gear home. But I don't know if it's going to work. So we're, we're testing that out. I did send my puffy jacket home, my Arc'teryx puffy jacket, which I loved. But again, with puffy jackets, I think they're all pretty much the same. I, I think it's really just the cut and the style you like. Um, but everybody loves their puff, puffy jacket out here, no matter the maker model. So I, I think you don't need to spend a fortune on them. Just get one you like. Um, but I did keep this. This is the fleece, my Arc'teryx fleece. This piece is just... This is This is probably my favorite piece of clothing because it's so versatile and it, it, it's warm, but it doesn't get super hot. And um, I just love it. I think I said the name of it in my first video. I can't remember now what the name is um, of the actual model, but it's, you can see what it looks like and maybe see it on, I got it on Moose Jaw, I believe. So, so that's that. I'll be back with the next uh, stuff sack in a minute. All right, so other than what I wear, these are all the clothes that I have in my, in my uh, bag <clears throat> that I carry. On the left, we have my, um, it's my fleece uh, hat, which I do keep now because this one has a special long, um, the mouse works makes it, um, and it has a special long um, brim that can come down over my eyes when I'm in a shelter or a uh, hostel and the, the sun comes up or the lights go on and I want to sleep, I just pull it down over my eyes. So it works as like a, a, an eye shield. It's brilliant. I carry another ShamWow in, in my clothes bag so that uh, I have one close by. If I'm getting my clothes out and there's some water around, I'll, I'll, damp, I'll, I'll wipe that up before I put my clothes down. Uh, bandana, you can never have enough bandanas, particularly when I was had the, uh, the nasal infection and was producing uh, mucus so tremendously in all that rain that came in very handy. My sleep system, this, this is my, it's a Rab uh, top long sleeve, uh, the icebreaker tights, and uh, some sleep socks that I don't even know what they are. I, it was the only right socks. That, 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 there's no reason to get anything but um, darn toughs. That, that, that just where I was at the time didn't have darn tough or I would have gotten darn tough. Um, just to keep my smelly feet away from my bag because your feet out here are gonna smell like you, they've never smelt in your life. You're just not gonna believe the, the scent you can produce. Anyway, moving on. Uh, my next set here is, this is what I didn't have originally. It's a town shirt, town shorts. 
And I had to do that because I, I essentially sent my rain pants home. So I had to get a pair of shorts for when I do my wash because um, I wash everything. So these are the two pieces that I keep out and I wear. Um, it's an icebreaker shirt and a Safi um, little shorty shorts, which they're like the military running shorts. I think they make them for the military. You get them $11 on Amazon. They're super lightweight. I, I love these things. I actually use them at the gym at home. Um, and for 11 bucks, you know, get them and try them out. And uh, they're great around here. And as you've probably seen in my videos, every hiker pretty much by the time they get into hot weather is wearing really short shorts. Um, so it's, uh, this is a good brand to have. I did buy another pair of darn tough uh, socks for, you know, when I've, I've suffered from, as you know, uh, some really rainy conditions and um, it's, they're not going to work um, if your, your shoes are completely soaked and still raining. But if you wake up in the morning, you're, after a day of rain, it's not raining and your shoes haven't dried out, but they're, they're halfway dried out. I will put those on and it will generally keep my feet dry and warm if it's not, if there's not a lot of puddles and whatnot out. Um, it's just, I, I think I've suffered from trench foot after those three days. I haven't talked about that yet, but um, it, it, it's so I, I really think having an extra pair of socks is good. And then finally, my buff, that's my, um, my buff that I use as my, um, as my uh, pillowcase. Right, so here are my electronics. Um, and some of this is overkill because uh, the problems I ran into with my phone, I, I've kind of doubled up on some things because just in case I have a, a malfunction or a breakdown in the middle of the, you know, a few days out in the woods, I wanted to have backup so I could video from here on out. So uh, the Bose headphones, um, that's a second set. I have a set I have on now. That's a second spare set uh, for when I need it. As you know, if you've been watching my videos, my microphone gave out on the Bose, so they're water resistant, not waterproof. Um, but I tried two other types of headphones since then to um, that were waterproof to replace them. And honestly, the sound quality was horrible. So I'm just sticking with the Bose and gonna gonna um, just try to protect them from water as much as possible. I have two cords for my. Apple chargers, I uh, just keep a spare because that's the kind of thing most people leave in shelters and I mean in hostels and I'm just afraid I'm going to leave it in a hostel and not be able to charge my phone when I get into um, kind of a four day stretch in the woods. This charger is for my watch, which is the uh, Phoenix, Phoenix uh, Garmin watch. Don't bother. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's an expensive watch and it, it doesn't even clock my... Um, clock my mileage right up here you know it can't it can't compute for the elevation so by the end of the day it's always two or three miles off of uh the the walking count you know it says i went 18 miles and the book says i did 22 you know so i don't know how valuable it is it, the altimeter is right and the barometer is right but um if i used the uh it has a GPS system. If I used the GPS, it would be accurate, but the problem with the GPS is I'd have to charge it every single night, and I don't want to do that. So um, so anyway, I don't. you really don't need a watch. You, I said it in my other video, this was just kind of a luxury item because I had so many Moose Jaw rewards, I just bought it, and, but I don't think you need to. Um, this, this has been the most surprising find that I've made. The Svance, S-V-A-N-C-E, battery charger, it's 10,000 megajoules, I think it is, which charges my um, Apple iPhone 6S Plus about three to four times. It's spectacular. And it was $18.99 on, um, on Amazon.com, and it weighs 6.5 ounces. I've, I haven't found another um, charger that's so lightweight with that, much, that many megajoules. Um, so... Uh, the next piece is my um, easel. I use this all the time. This is the UltraPod, and you can see this little um, Velcro. This is what's great. It wraps around a tree. So I can, very often times when I do those setup shots that I walk away from, this will be on a tree or a pole, and then this gets screwed into the top, which is what I put my phone into, and uh, that's how I do those videos. This I didn't have until after the rain drama. I bought this for when it gets really rain. I'll lock my phone down in, into that. 
This is a charger, two, two charger um, anchor. Works great. This is, I can't recommend this. I'm using them still, but this is a PhotoFast backup for my iPhone. This goes into the iPhone and this is the storage so that I can take my videos and put it here when I don't have access to Wi-Fi, I can put them in the cloud. The problem is it doesn't always work. And I don't know, I haven't been able to figure out why, but it's extremely frustrating to put this in and sometimes it doesn't acknowledge it. It can't, it can't find it. Then sometimes it does. So I, I like having this 128 gigs that I can download my videos to, but it's so infrequent, it's, it's, it's hit or miss. So I can't recommend it. Um, this is my connector for the Svance. And then this is my new, um, my new uh, headlamp, which I can carry like this, or can put in here and use like a head uh, band. It's, it's the Phoenix 3. It has, I think it's 265 lumens up to, which is why I got it, because I do want to start night hiking. And uh, one of my friends, Cricket, out here had, had it, and I was just blown away by how bright it makes the pitch black. Uh, nights out here with no moon it just shines the the whole woods kind of come alight a, a so I got that for when I want to start night hiking and I usually just take it out like this and put it to the side of my sleeping bag at night so when I want to go to the bathroom or whatever I could use it that way um, and then when I night hike I will put it in here and and use it as a headlamp so that's it for the electronics so this is my uh, final pack. It's my kind of catch-all stuff sack. Uh, some people call it a ditty bag. Um, I will go through it very quickly. I won't go into e what's into each of these, just kind of in general what's in them. Obviously, toothbrace, uh, toothbrush, earplugs. You need these sometimes. I have two sets in here. These are the best earplugs I've ever used in my life, world's finest natural earplugs. They're kind of waxy, and they mold into your ear. I will get rid of one set of these and just carry one because they're a little heavy. I carry an extra bottle cap because a smart bottle water cap because these things disappear like nobody's business. Um, this little ointment I carry for whatever my needs are. Usually it goes on my feet. This is some powder for chafing and for feet to dry them out. This is some DEET. I haven't used it yet because I've been using that all natural uh, bug spray, but I have it as a backup in case the bugs get extremely bad and, uh, and I need it. Um, this a nail clipper, I actually usually don't carry these. I buy them and then leave them in a hiker box. I'll cut my nails and then leave them in a hiker box because I don't want to carry it. And you can get them in most towns for 50 cents, so why carry it? Why have the weight? Uh, but I just haven't thrown that out yet or found a hiker box to put it in, and I hate to throw things out. So these are spectacular. Easy towels. This is them. You put water on it, and they turn into these great towels that you can wash with. I wash my legs. Usually at the end of the day, they're filthy before I get into a sleeping bag. Uh, they're great for just anything. Um, I use them when I eat, uh, and they don't weigh that much because they're not wet, like wet ones. Um, and I've just heard, I saw on Amazon that they have some, these are made with rayon, which I don't know how biodegradable it, they are. It says 100% biodegradable, but I don't know. It's rayon. I just saw they have that make them in cotton too. So I'm going to try them in cotton and see what that works because then you can use them for anything and you don't have to pack them out. You can just burn them in the fire or whatnot. Um, these are my medical kit and my, my, uh, my medicine, pills, whatever. I don't really go into this too much. The m main thing I use is ibuprofen. Um, and I don't even use that too much. I've just started using it because my, my feet have been hurting me, the bottoms of my feet. But I have a bug, bug net that I haven't used, some emergency um, water pills because um, I'm not carrying the Aquamira anymore. I was carrying it as a safety, but that's my safety now. In case I lose my filter, if something goes wrong with it, I'll have that until I get to a town. Sorted little pills. Uh, and then this is all I have now for bandages, Neosporin. That's a little, some line stuff for my tent, which I can also use as a clothes line. Just assorted things like little safety clips, that sort of thing. And that's, that's really it. So uh, that's basically it for my pack. There are a few other things I keep in a little pouch. Um, 
a pen, a very lightweight small pen that I, I do need occasionally. I carry this, this used to be on the outside of my pack but it started fraying. I found this in Franklin I believe it with the Scottish, uh, the Scottish Museum which is surprising it's my family's uh, I'm Scottish, my, my last name is Scottish, and if you can figure out which kilt this is, you'll know, you'll know what my last name is. Uh, but that's that I carry with me uh, in this little pouch. I also carry some charms that people gave me. Somebody gave me a little Ganesha, which is the Indian god for uh, obstacles. For He puts obstacles in the way and helps, helps, get, helps you get over them. And Lord knows I've been through some obstacles. Um, some black coral, which is uh, really good luck little heart. Um, around my neck I have a St. Christopher medal and Our Lady of Guadalupe which friends gave me that I carry with me. My brother gave me this this bracelet, quitting is forever, pain is temporary. My um, Camino uh, band I wear all the time. So just anything, you know, as I said before, anything that will help me get through this, that will, you know, give me the strength to do this, I will carry. And then the other things that I keep in that, in that pouch are, um, I have right now four rocks. And I haven't really talked about this, but um, one rock I picked up when I was on the approach show to Springer Mountain because there is a tradition. It, on a Camino, it's a big tradition. And I've heard of a few people doing it here at, on, on the Appalachian Trail, but I decided I wanted to do it, which is I took a rock at the beginning of Katata and I'm gonna carry it all the way, at Springer Mountain, rather. I'm gonna carry it all the way and put it on top of the mountain at Katata. Um, but I also have three other stones and what they represent to me and I haven't talked about this I've told you about the experiences, but I haven't told you that I've been taking physical things uh, after my Jacob's Ladder experiences so to speak One happened at Jacob's Ladder one is at top of Roan Mountain and one is uh, During the rain the three days of rain when I had those experiences a lot a lot went on in my head in all of those things and, and I I got through a lot of stuff, it processed a lot, and, and these rocks for me um, represent getting over that on some level. And so I'm taking them with the rock that I got on uh, the approach trail, and I'm gonna leave them all at, at the top of Katad. So I'm carrying that extra weight uh, with me, but uh, happy to do so. And then the only other thing I wanna talk about is the clothing I'm wearing. So love this hat, I got it in Franklin. Costa, I don't even know the brand, and I should say right now, I've gotten absolutely nothing free. Nobody's even offered me anything free. Like, I'm just like, I thought, you know, maybe because I have these videos and putting it out there that somebody, don't, you know, send me a free hat or something, nothing. So all of the gear that I, um, that I talk about is gear I paid full price for, and that, um, so when, when I say I, I like it and that it's good, I, I mean it, I'm not just, uh, there's no product placement here, so to speak. Um, Icebreaker shirts, love icebreaker shirts. The merino wool really does help with the smell a little bit. Uh, but I got to tell you, when you're hiking like we are out here, and you're you're wearing it for four days straight in the rain and and sleeping in them, and it, it, there's no way that these really get really clean, clean. Uh, but they are better than than synthetic. So I do have that. I have. Icebreaker shorts, the black shorts you see me in walking sometimes, those are icebreaker, and they're a blend between um, uh, merino wool and something else, but they, they're very good and they help with chafing. I did buy a pair of ex officio boxer briefs that I wear that, um, that actually help with chafing, and pretty much a lot of hikers use those, and I can see why, because I was having some chafing problems and then I put those on and since then, no problem. The pants, I started with the Prana convertible pants and I loved them, especially in the winter. They were a little thicker, so they, they, they kept in warmth a little bit, but the zippers actually, um, the, just the fabric, it wasn't bad, but just the fabric bunching there at my knees created um, some, some not rashes, but like pimples almost on my knees. So I had to change them, they were scraping. I guess when you're walking 20 miles a day, 15, whatever I was walking back then, I guess it was 13 to 15 miles a day. When you're walking that much, it's just scraping against the skin. So you really can't have any kind of friction points. So I converted and I have ex officio pants. These are really lightweight pants. They don't weigh a lot, um, but they keep the dirt off and, uh, and I really like them. When it gets super hot though, obviously I, I wear my shorts underneath these pants at all times so I can just take them off and put them in my bag and uh, go with the shorts. My socks, darn tough socks, I had the same pair that I started with, and I started with in gingy liners, and I gotta tell you, I think they were fine, but I got so sick of trying to figure out the toes in the morning. Like, it's really hard to, 
kind of get the toes out and get them in the right direction and put them on. So I just ended up getting a pair of darn tough running socks, which I use as a liner. They're a little booty, very thin booty sock, which is the liner. And then I use the darn tough uh, medium weight hiking uh, sock on top of it. And I love it. I, I, Honestly, I don't know why anybody would buy anything but darn tough socks. I think they're that good and when you have a lifetime guarantee and they will Change them. I've done it with no questions asked. You just say Want a new pair of socks, uh, you know if they, if they have a hole they have to have some sort of uh, Use to them that, that that there's a reason for it, but they 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 exchange it without without question So I don't know why anyone would go with uh, another sock um and I think that's it. Uh, my shoes, my Cascadias, uh, I think I have about 350 miles on them. I am going to replace them um, at uh, Duncannon because I need a new pair of sho shoes when the rocks get really bad. And right after Duncannon, apparently the rocks get really, really bad. So I wanted that extra cushioning. These are holding up pretty well though. Uh, I'll probably show you before I send them back home because I'm gonna send them home. I think they have some life in them yet. And, uh, but, and then after I get through the rocks, if those shoes need to be replaced, I might have my parents send these back and use them for uh, another 100 miles or so. So um, so that's really it. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope it's been helpful. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. But I, I'm, I'm so far behind on the comments and it makes me really feel, I, I feel horrible about it because I read them right away. Whenever I get service, I go straight to my comments and, and it really does help me through. I, I love the fact that you are all a following and have something to say and I, I appreciate it. I just don't have the time very often to, um, to, to while I'm hiking or while I'm uh, doing the videos to, to, to respond. So, but I will get back to you eventually. Just give me some time and, uh, and I think that's it. So I will see you in the next video.